So yesterday morning, I woke up to see that we'd had some snow. So I immediately grabbed my camera bag and headed out to the local forest that I've visited a quite a few times over the past few days to see how the snow had changed the forest and if I could maybe grab some photographs. However, when I got here, it wasn't quite what I expected. I kind of should have known better really, but the tree canopy in this particular area is really, really dense. So none of the snow had come through. So kind of what I was presented with when I got here was pretty much what I've kind of seen every time I have been here, certainly over the last week or so, which is pretty flat, uninspiring light and uh, just a damp, wet ground. In fact, even more damp because the top of the trees had obviously had the snow on it. And by the time I got here, that started to melt and all the water was raining down on me. Now, I guess what I could have done is pretty much what I've done about three or four times this past week, which is keep the camera in my bag and just go for a really nice stroll around what is a beautiful forest. That in itself is a good thing. Not having a photograph at the end of it isn't a disaster. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit different and I kind of came prepared for the fact that maybe I wouldn't get what I'd intended to. This time I brought along a macro lens because I figured if I can't do what I'd originally thought of, then just do something else not to be so single focused, if that makes sense. And I'm kind of beginning to realize that landscape photography is so many things, but also requires us as the photographer to also be so many things. One of them being adaptable. So I guess being adaptable is part and parcel of what being a photographer is, because it's very rarely that we go on a photo shoot where we've kind of planned what pictures we're gonna be taking it's very rare that everything just runs perfectly smoothly. There's always some kind of thing that's gonna throw a curveball in there that means we need to try to do something a little bit different to get the result. And I guess one of the ways that I talk about this in my life as a portrait photographer is when it comes to the lighting style. Um, you know, we kind of take a, a particular lighting style. In fact, in fact, one of the things I kind of tell people is not to try to learn too much but rather get to know a, a particular lighting style and do it over and over again so that you become really, really familiar with it. So you can maybe do it so incredibly easy in a large studio. But the adapting side of thing is when you can take that big setup into a small environment, just like what I'm photographing World War II veterans in their homes, where there's such limited space with loads of furniture, but being able to recreate the same lighting, the same look that I had in the big studio, but also do that in the small studio, so that in the, in the, in the living room. So that's all about being adaptable. And I guess if we talk about being adaptable when it comes to doing landscape photography, when we come out, we plan where we're gonna go, where the sun's gonna be, we get an idea of what the weather's gonna be like, although those apps, they're, <laughs> they're a little bit hit and miss, best job in the world being a weatherman, isn't it? You can get it completely wrong and still get paid for that, but by the by. Um, but yeah, when it comes to landscape photography, you know, you come out with the idea of taking a certain picture, but when you get there, it just doesn't go to plan. So what do you do? Do you just pack up and go or do you adapt? And when I say adapt, do you kind of think, well, no, if I can't get this, I'm going to get something. And that's what I've kind of done today, bringing out this macro lens so that I can leave with something which might not be what I wanted to get in the first instance, but could be equally rewarding. So rather than going home with nothing, I put on my macro lens and just started slowly walking around 
looking down to the floor and on the trees to see what little details I could photograph that I would ordinarily have walked past, stepped over, or worse still, stepped on. Now, one thing I'm really conscious of when I'm here photographing all these details that I'm gonna do with this macro lens is not to just photograph them with flat lighting. Now we're really lucky here because where I'm stood at the moment, I'm literally just a few paces away from quite a large man-made track right through the center of the forest. So that means there's an area, quite a large area walking as we go up here, where there are no trees and that's allowing all the light in. And the great thing about that is, that means that this area here, right in front of me, is like a huge softbox. So because there's a canopy on top allowing minimal light coming in, but there's a big space over there where all the light's coming in. It's almost like we're getting like a natural cross lighting coming into the forest. And you can kind of see that when you look at the trees. We've got light on one side and shadow on the other. And this is so much like what I would teach when I'm talking about portrait lighting, when we go for that cross lighting. And eventually we kind of manipulate it a bit to get the Rembrandt lighting. But we're getting a really interesting lighting here. So I'm gonna use that when I am photographing with this macro lens, which is the first time I've really ever used it. Um, so I will be photographing side on to this light. So I'm gonna get shadow and highlight across the details in the tree. And that's gonna really exaggerate the contrast, but it's gonna make, just make things a bit more interesting. It's gonna bring them to life rather than just being flat lighting. So I guess this is almost like portrait lighting in the landscape. Uh, which is pretty handy for me, really, I guess, being a portrait photographer. And while I'm here getting rained on, one real bonus is that I found this uh, mushroom grown out the side of this tree stump, which is an absolute beauty. It really is really vibrant orange. So I've got the camera down here, got the composition, but what I've also got in my bag, I put a piece of cardboard and I wrapped some silver foil around it so I can now use this as a bounce card. This was a, a little tip by my good friend Ian Munro, who said he takes the old little uh, metal kind of like uh, tobacco tins, use the lids of those, but I didn't have one, so I'll use this instead. So what I'm doing is taking a series of pictures of the, uh, the mushroom, where I'm using this little bit of silver foil to light it up in certain areas, and then I can kind of combine all those pictures later, I can stack them in, uh, in Photoshop and create one image that almost looks like there's a bit of lighting on that particular mushroom, but that, again, it's just a real gem of a find just by slowing down, having something else in my kit bag that I can use I, than the macro lens. And it's kind of made me take my eyes from looking around to looking down and it's a whole new world. This is really, really good fun. So yeah, I've had a really good couple of hours in the forest. Didn't know what to uh, expect, obviously, because I couldn't get what I thought I was going to get, which was the pitch with all the, uh, the snow. But I've ended up getting something that I'm really quite happy with. I can't wait to see how that, uh, that mushroom picture turns out. So all I'm going to do now is ugh, have another coffee, pack my stuff away and then uh, head home, I guess. There you go, but yeah, really, really good, spontaneous 
couple of hours that I didn't expect, but um, hopefully you got something out of this. More than anything, I guess, it's just to say to be adaptable. Don't just think you can't get what you want to get, so just go home. There could always be something else. That is definitely something I'm bringing over from my portrait world into my landscape world. But there you go. That's all I've got for you this week. If you, uh, if you want to support this channel, and I really, really hope you do, all you've got to do is just click on the subscribe button. That's a huge help. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep on top of all the goings on with this landscape journey and other videos that I'm putting out, I've got some more Photoshop and Lightroom editing tutorials coming out very, very soon. Just click on the old bell icon there and you won't miss any of those. But uh, for now, I'm going to finish this coffee. I'll bid you farewell and keep well.